Cut Glass School is a phenomenon. It is a temporary community every summer of people who come to learn about glass and to learn really about how to create in an environment that is itself beautiful. So it's about people, it's about place, and it's about creativity. And it's, it's existed now for 36, 37 years, since 1971, when it was founded by Dale Chihuly, a Seattle artist and really international artist, who started it with a small band of fellow artists coming and camping in the same ground. And slowly over the years, it's taken shape and form and never really lost his original intention, which was that artists teach artists, that artists can share what they know and teach others how to be creative and skillful using glass. To me, it is a place where people come to have a life transforming experience. Uh, they seek that out purposefully with glass and they are never disappointed. Always been a place where uh, the international glass community uh, comes and shows what they have to the American community and um, develop uh, ties and uh, communication and uh, expression together. What I didn't know about glass was I did not know the community of people, of individuals that came with the medium. So where are you guys from? Calgary. Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Yeah, we came out here to help with pole turners and we're from uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada and we have a studio together um, called Bee Kingdom. So when you drop when you drop a tool, everyone sort of drops a tool as well, so it's not as embarrassing. And it is an amazing world of people who are the most sharing and caring and sociable. One doesn't necessarily think of artists being sort of outgoing and uh, and sharing. And you think of them really alone in their attic, creating and waiting for inspiration to spike to to strike in a solitary way. And and glass artists, either because they work as teams, but their, their, um, the character and the temperament and the, um, the, the general um, friendliness of glass artists is, is pretty amazing. It's, it's really blown me away. And it's what you see here at Pilchuck the whole time. What? What? It's not bigger, it's just what? That's right. It's all good. Within this, the structure of the hot shop, or here, well, here at Pilchuck or anywhere in any, in any studio, there's a space around, say, like where we are, are, are working, like Gaffer's Bench, where everyone has a flow of what they're doing. They're getting gathers, they're doing this or doing that, but there's a space around that Gaffer's Bench where that team that is structured to be there is there. And when the pieces are being made, the timing is such that you can't really have a lot of people just kind of hanging around, and no one does. Everyone. Un intrinsically understands the nature of that space and don't cross into it unless either they're called upon. So if I need an extra hand, pair, pair of hands, I'll call someone and they come over and then they come over and they'll be in that space. Collaboration is just so important because there's the, the ideas of how to make something, just this changing of proportions or scale and whole different styles of glass and Oh yeah, it's it's a huge, and it really, the ball gets rolling, and it's like you have to just throw a lasso out and reach on and hold on to it because it just starts pulling away from you, and it's it's almost at some points too, like during a normal session up here, there's with all the classes going, it's hard to stay focused because there's so much going on and so many different ideas that you need to stay focused, but at the same time, all of the people really help throw and make your ideas a lot better too. It's not an individual thing, basically. It's not like a studio artist sitting in the studio waiting for the paint to dry and in charge of making all the decisions and being able to erase the decision and redraw the line. With glass, it's reacting to something that's almost living.
it's the alchemical aspect. It's the fa fascinating aspect that there's no rules, that there's no written, it's a completely learned experience. When we start out, it might just be the two of us, you know, just kind of heating and papering and stuff like that, and then one more person comes in for the blowing, and then opening doors, and then torching, and then the punty, and then the cone, and then uh, bring all together and another person to, to take it off. So as that intensity builds, everyone becomes more and more focused and, and ceases basically to talk a lot at all. The commands are very short, they're very succinct, hopefully, <laughs> if I've done my job right, and also the, a lot of hand signals. And so once those hand signals and that sort of structure of, of the language is, is set up, the team is able to really effectively get what's done and needs to be done without a lot of talking about it. Because if you have to talk about it, it's too late. The moment is gone. The heat that you needed to, to make whatever you needed to have happen right then is gone if you have to talk about it. Hilchuk is um, a place where there is unlimited creativity and the potential to um, create uh, opportunities, amazing new opportunities for learning and uh, also um, to constantly advance what you can do with glass as a material. Can I see the smiley face? And the most beautiful part of the whole thing is that the way that people interact with the material exposes who they are as a person. I don't know, you guys have been here a while and you've watched how everybody works with material, but pretty much their personality of touching and holding and relating to the material is so evident. You know, you really understand people through this. amazing material and everybody does it differently and, and there's always something new to learn. It's just so nice and you meet so many nice people and everybody's like helping you and teaching you and, and what, wants to show what they do and how they do it and it's just such a nice sort of way of living I think. I really like it. auction raises money for Pilchuck each year, raises a considerable part of Pilchuck's annual budget. And the wonderful thing about it, the wonderful thing about the auction is that artists donate pieces to the auction, works of art mostly in glass, um, which are then sold often to quite, sub quite substantial, quite established collectors. And then the money, of course, raised comes back to the school so that other artists might come. So it's almost like a kind of cyclical process of artists through their generosity and, and collectors through their, also their generosity, giving back to the school and the school benefiting. Well, actually I've been coming to the auctions for about 10 years and I always pick out something that I have to bring home with me. And then this was the piece for tonight. I bid on a couple other pieces that I've been outbid on. And I'm actually very glad that I um, guaranteed this bid and I'm taking this one home with me. auction pieces. We have close to 300 glass pieces that people have donated. They get packed and move downtown in big trucks um, and we work around the clock to uh, first of all put up an exhibition. Uh, that, get, that gets done in 36 hours. Then we have a pilchuck on display night which is Thursday night. That's when we're open to the public and they can come see the glass, talk to the artists. Then Friday night is the auction and uh, it's a gala event. People get all dressed up and fancy and the centerpieces just look stunning on the tables. There's, 
I don't know if there's like a hundred tables or what, but um, they're pretty amazing. They also, um, they design the, uh, they look at the centerpieces and they think about the table settings and the colors, and they kind of try to get the environment for the pieces to work with the pieces. It's subtle, it's not gonna be overt or anything, but I think, I think it's just gonna be incredibly elegant. Okay, so basically what we have here is, um, these are the prototypical drawings. Um, there was a jury competition about this. this Each process. year, um, an artist is chosen through a competitive process to um, produce over a hundred, about 125 finished, perfected centerpieces that are set on the tables at the auction and that are also available to be purchased by the auction goers. So they're available for bid. The uh, person, the artist who's been selected to make the centerpieces is Michael Fox, um, who actually has a long history with Pilchuck. The process that, that Michael is going through right now is working with, I think, about, about 25 other artists, nearly all of whom volunteer to, to spend almost two weeks in a, the fastest production process you can imagine. Michael Fox came in with a design that was purposely very um, elegant, simple, and um, refined, and asked the pole turners to uh, be a part of, cr of the creative process. So he asked them if they had ideas as they were working to um, tell him and to uh, have input on what they were, were making. So instead of a, a traditional production line where you're making the same thing over and over again, every piece is a little bit different. Uh, today we did gray, red, and emerald. Gray, red, and emerald. Okay, yeah, tomorrow gray, red, red. let's start with a bunch of clears off and let's measure these cones. The theme of the auction is International Glass School, Pilchuck. Pilchuck is an international glass school, so I interpreted that to mean, in my mind, that I would base it on, you know, students that come to the school. That's what really creates, in my mind, the international aspect, because students come from all over the world. So I figured the best way to tie that in was to base the, my design proposal on the international flag symbols from around the world. Well, I was on the jury for the design and uh, there's a number of other arts professionals and people involved in the auction. And uh, we started on the left side here and Michael's design was over here. And so we went around and we talked about everybody's design and we talked about the pros and the cons and we got around to Michael's piece and everyone was silent. And finally someone said, well, I think it's great. And everyone said, yeah, I do too. And so it was pretty much unanimous. We've developed a bit of a universal language here. Uh with symbols, so I don't have to speak, because whenever I speak, I tend to say too much. So I've given the crew some universal hand signals for the shapes that I'd like, and they have gestural movements, but the fundamental ones are the cone, which symbolizes the peace sign. We've got the sphere, which commonly identifies itself as okay. And then we've got the bowl, which is known as the rock on, I think, or is that the devil symbol? We've got the cone and the sphere. Oh, that was wrong. The cone and the bowl. We have the cone and the bowl combination. And the sphere and the cone. People who come to Pilchuck will go out and meet someone or talk to someone and say, you gotta go to Pilchuck. You will not be the same afterwards. And, uh, and it's always, pretty much always true. I would say that the, the experience reverberates for a long time. That's, I think that's the main thing, is the experience seems to like have a life of its own, you know, after you leave here. It's really intense while you're here, and maybe it's not all good, but it's never all bad. I've been really lucky to do, do this job. I mean, it's really really been amazing and I, I wish I could stay here forever and never go home but you know I don't know how to do that yet unless I buy the place <laughs>